Okay, thank you. So, uh, what I'm going to do here is, first of all, this is, of course, equivalent to this, which is equivalent to this, which uh, means that it turns out to be the same thing as this. And, of course, graphing it doesn't take a leap of the imagination to so that if normal x cubed looks like this, Wait, no, that's not what normal x cubed looks like. And normal x cubed looks like this. The cap, oh. That means that the absolute value of x cubed will look very similar, something like this. Not a parabola, but something very close to one. So, first of all, we're showing that f prime prime of x exists. Now, what would it mean for f prime prime of x to not exist? Well, that would simply mean that f of f prime of x uh, is not always differentiable. Now, what do we know? Well, if something is continuous, <laughs> by definition, it always has to be differentiable. Now, of course, I'm not talking about very special functions, like, for example, the virus cross function, but this function is clearly analytic, so if it's continuous, it's differentiable. Now, it should be very obvious that it's continuous everywhere because, I mean, you can show that there's no point at which the limit as x approaches a of f of x is not equal to f of a. This is true uh, this is true everywhere, of course. So, there were no discontinuities or jumps or holes. So, that means that this is continuous. But, of course, we're not talking about this. We're talking about its derivative, right? So, what does its derivative look like? Well, here's the thing. The derivative for the first half, the positive half, is going to look the exact same because that aligns completely with y equals x cubed. So, that's just going to be 3x squared. Oh, crap. Bro, where'd it go? Oh, sucks. Okay, so this is going to align completely. Oh, I can't draw for the life of me today. So, this is just y equals 3x squared. But then, something very interesting happens, because, okay, you will observe that the other half is going to be, of course, negative, because it's flipped around from the original version, which is entirely negative. So then, the other half is going to look like this. y equals minus 3 actually. But, of course, both these functions are continuous by themselves, and the one point that they may have this continuity, right over here, both of the functions are at 0, 0, which means this is continuous everywhere. And thus, since it's continuous everywhere, because it's continuous along these two curves and it's continuous at the meeting point, that means that it's differentiable everywhere. And of course, if the first derivative if the first derivative is differentiable, that obviously means that the second derivative exists. And finally, we're tasked with finding the thing. Now, of course, this is very simple, once again, as all we have to do is split it up into two halves, like a piecewise, and all we get is that the second derivative of this uh, positive half is going to be 6x. <laughs> So 6x like this, and the negative half is going to be minus 6x. Which looks like this. And I think that it doesn't take much imagination to realize this is just y equals the absolute value of 6x, which is the double derivative. So, of course, if 
f of x is equal to the absolute value of x cubed, then f prime prime of x is equal to the absolute value of 6x, which exists everywhere. <laughs> Thank you. Extremely thanks, dear. And my excellent I've been extremely grateful for you to be there. Of course. So, thank you very much.